And Dr Joe Kosterich joins us in the studio this morning. Good morning to you, Dr Joe. Good morning, now, Tim. Look, we don't know all the specifics of Philip Hughes' condition and the injury he sustained, so we might have to speak a little broadly here uh, just for the moment. But can you tell us what sorts of problems might Philip Hughes be facing uh, in his recovery if he indeed comes out of the, uh, the horrible predicament that he's currently in? First thing, this sort of accident is necessarily quite freakish. I mean, literally every week in Australia there are thousands of people playing, you know, playing cricket. This sort of injury is a little bit like if you've been punched in the head. So there'll almost certainly be some bleeding between the, the skull. So if you think about the brain, it sits inside the skull. And between the bone and the brain are three layers of lining called the meninges, which people probably think about the most when you get meningitis, which is an infection of that. Mm -hmm. Typically with trauma to the brain, you get what's called a subdural hematoma, which is just a medical way of saying you get some bleeding under one of those layers. But because the, the brain is within this box of bone, if it gets, if there's additional swelling, there's nowhere for the brain to go. If you get a hit on the ankle and it swells up, it'll swell outwards and you can see it. Same if you get a blow, say, to the knee. But within the brain, within the skull cavity, there's nowhere for the swelling to go. So the bleeding will push against the brain. When the brain gets squeezed, that's where the real injury comes about. So again, the surgery will have been done, I'm almost certain, is obviously to drain that bleeding away. Now, the next thing becomes um, preventing uh, swelling of the brain, and that's where he'll be kept in an induced coma. Ultimately, um, in terms of what happens with the brain, that becomes apparent when uh, you come out of a coma. Has there been any effect on memory? Has there been mm. any effect on concentration? And this is purely speculation, mm. Tim. Um, but obviously the brain is a very sensitive part of the body. Mm. Equally, the fact that it all happened very quickly um, gives him his abs absolutely best chance of, of you know, f very major and possibly full recovery. And we mm. do see full recovery with, uh, yep. with injuries. That is some encouraging news, at least. Look, we were just seeing some pictures there of that hit to Philip Hughes. You said it's a freakish injury. Not entirely unheard of, though, for a cricketer to take a, a fierce blow to the head. Uh, we've, I think we've got some pictures here of Justin Langer uh, copping a similar blow. I think crucially for that one, it was a, a, probably a couple of inches higher. Hit him on the helmet as opposed to just below the helmet and actually on the the surface of the head. So that's uh, an important difference to point out straight away. Um, of course, Justin Langer, he suffered a nasty concussion. Is that the difference that layer of helmet can make? Look, certainly the helmet provides a lot of protection. So yes, there'll be a knock to the head, but clearly not as marked as if there's no helmet. However, there are a couple of other factors, I suppose, and one is the angle with which the ball is hit. And when we look at this issue with Phil Hughes, he's almost turned you know, right around yeah. um, and his neck may have been a bit of an angle as well so that also makes a difference the the rotation can mm. be a factor as well and then on top of all of that sometimes some of these things are a little bit in the laps of the gods so the yep. same sort of blow could happen you know multiple times and for whatever reason maybe there's not the tearing of a blood vessel or it's just you know one fraction of a millimeter lower or it's just a slightly more glancing blow Again, we've got to remember back in the you know the 60s and 70s when guys like Dennis Lilly and Jeff Thompson were bowling. Um, you know, people batted without helmets. Well, yeah, they're a, a um, thing and, of the 70s, aren't they? That's yeah. where they came in. They've changed a lot in that mm. time. And, and there were at times, you know, blows to the, the head, and, and it's never good. But also, um, you know, to be it is fair to say that this sort of accident in that angle at mm. that time, um, you know, it's a constellation of circumstances. Yeah. Can I ask you, uh, just to clear up some medical jargon for us here, mm. we know Philip Hughes has been put into a medically induced coma. What does that actually entail? Yeah, it's a little bit like being under an anaesthetic. So, in other words, if you go to sleep, you'll wake up when you wake up. If you're in a, a medically induced sleep, then you're held in that situation much like, well, it's a form of, of it's a form of anaesthesia. It's not a general anaesthetic. And the idea being that you're resting the brain. Now, again, it sounds obvious. If you have an ankle injury, you're generally advised not to run on the mm -hmm. ankle. If you have a brain injury, you don't want the brain doing too much. So you don't want it thinking. You can't switch the brain off completely. Yeah. It's still controlling the body. But the idea of an induced coma is to minimise brain activity. Um, so so therefore, again, you're resting the brain. OK. And is there any period of time where it's safe to be in a medically induced coma? Can that go on indefinitely or do you need to look at bringing a person out of a medically induced coma after a period yeah. of time? Look, it can't go on indefinitely and that's where, um, yes, as days go by and they'll be monitoring this obviously on a constant basis, it looks like the situation is such that, yes, they can bring him out of the, uh, you know, bring him out of the coma. 
again, I'm not sure whether it's right to mention this in this circumstance, but in, you know, in different situations, if it doesn't look like people are going to be able to come out of the coma, that's when, I suppose, other questions start to get raised. But we're okay. absolutely you know, not in, in, in that sort of situation here. Um, when they can bring him out of the coma, that'll be a medical decision based mm. on the scans and based on um, you know, his vitals and an assessment made by the, uh, you know, the medical team there at St Vincent's. All right, well, they're saying uh, 24 to 48 hours are crucial here, so we uh, await mm. the next update on Philip Hughes' condition. But uh, thank you for clearing some of those issues up for us. Dr Joe, we'll see you this time next Wednesday, hopefully talking about something a little less uh, critical than this one.